All right, this is round 10. Johnson Beach Condo. I right passed the secret cellar. And this, one of these tall buildings right here. So I've been in Jam Tien for about two weeks now, and I want to show you what my daily routine looks like. I normally start off by going to the hotel gym, or the apartment gym, doing a pretty light workout. Uh, what's nice is it's open air, so you have the fan, and you can work out without a shirt. I normally just work out in my Valet Tudo shorts that I go swimming in, uh, which is the next part of my day. That was Sam in our ghetto prison gym. <laughs> The nice view. This has been my routine every morning. Come to the hotel gym, work out for a little bit, put up a sweat, go for a little swim. A little dip to cool off here. Lots of kids right now though. Oh, we have our steak lunch after a nice workout. Cup. Wow, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, what you got? Don't remember. Chicken steak, pork steak, mashed potatoes, fries, sausages. I got a fish, fried fish, some uh, grilled chicken, french fries, spaghetti. All this for 199 baht. This is the best deal in the world, Chris. Yeah. Eight bucks, guys. I this is $8. Way to eat. Sizzler ain't got nothing on this. Alright, it looks like Rambutan is season 3 kilos for 100 baht. It's like a dollar a, a kilo. Oh, are they good? Sorry, cup. Hello, Mai? Hi. Guys, so I just bought 4 kilos of Rambutan. Rambutan, mate. Rambutan. Rambutan. And how, how to say mango? Mango. And how many mangoes? Ten mangoes for 200 baht, which is seven dollars something. Very good. Three kilo. Oh, same, same, two kilo. <laughs> Guys, this is where you buy your fruits. In front of a 7-Eleven parking lot. The best. You can get some fried chicken, fish as well. Whatever is the beach, and this is where I just had a, an amazing lunch. These really nice noodles. You can buy everything here. Some zapitos. You can buy a, a villa, condo. This is what you hear everywhere. These guys. Meanwhile, this is our office of the day called Ice Queen. The Queen. Of ice cream. Sorry, cop. People here enjoying ice cream. Me and Chris are co working here. Chris. <laughs> Six ki no, seven kilos, Chris. 200 baht. <laughs> Is that a deal? Do you can do a workout, right? <laughs> so I've just been sitting here by the beach eating my rambutan, which I have four kilos of. Actually, probably three now. I gave I gave some of it to Chris. And I'm just thinking, how good is this life, guys? Sitting here with tropical fruit, enjoying the waves. People hanging out, you know? It's like a really good life. And behind me, all these vendors are selling different types of food. So actually, I just had chicken and rice come and guy, my favorite dish. And I'm just sitting here eating amazing food that you can't even get from most of the world. This is my uh, second or third favorite of the family. I'm still waiting for light cheese, guys. When light cheese come, that's when. Johnny the Beast will come. You'll see me. I'll eat all four kilos. But even ties like it, they just kind of hang out. They picnic with their friends. They drink. They have a beer. It's actually like a really nice life, you know? Oi! <laughs> I'm 
<laughs> Cooper are think the only thing about Thailand, and I'm surprised it's still allowed illegal. Are these guys who just drive around in the back of pickup trucks with these loud uh, speakers? And normally it's some like promo where they're trying to sell something, like uh, I don't know, loans or something, insurance, or it could be political. Either way, it's so annoying. I hope Thailand gets rid of that. That's this tractor. That's <laughs> Sam. I don't know why he's doing his work out here. Out of all the nice places on the beach. I was just walking this way. Sneak up on him. It's like an animal. Hey. I was looking for you. Oi! Oi! Johnny bought a kite. So while we'll hanging out with some friends on the beach, I decided to buy a kite off one of the, the vendors. Uh, only 120 baht or so, maybe six dollars. And it was a really windy day, so it was like a perfect day to fly a kite. And I haven't flown one since I was literally just a little child. So it was fun. Takes a bit too. I just tie No, John, give it to me. I want to play it. <laughs> Titan Master Chris is going to show me how it's done. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, go away from the tree. <laughs> how do you make it go like. He's like, go away from the trees. So we gave uh, our kite away to this little kid, and she loves it. She weighs 120 baht, who can, can do. Oi. I wish you were here in Thailand with us. Uh, Derek, thank you for holding down the fort in LA. We wish you were here to enjoy the food with us. Cheers. Head to the sportsman, guys. So one of the best things about being in Thailand is the Sunday roast. One of the only amazing foods I miss that I actually like in the UK. Check this out. We had a Yorkshire pudding. We got probably six types of veg. Roast pork, New Zealand lamb, and a, uh, a beef as well. My boy David. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. And that's how you know it's proper. Oy. I just wish it wasn't Singha, it was a nice uh, proper lager, it's all right. So this is about $15, 495 baht. Look what we got. Roast chicken, boiled ham, bacon stuffed chicken, honey baked ham, roast pork, roast lamb, two types of beef, steak and uh, kidney pie, two types of potatoes, Six types of veg. Ooh, aloy mak mak. And all this stuff too. We got different types of gravy. And we got a couple of soups as well. This is amazing. Of course, I had to go for a round two, guys. I tried to make it small, but it had to work out. Round two. Fight. Fight. So, as you can see, I'm almost always at a public cafe when using my laptop. And thanks to this week's sponsor, Clear VPN, I can keep my data safe and secure while I'm browsing the web using a shared password. If you're working out of cafes, coffee shops, or using public networks such as airports or anywhere that's shared, you are crazy not to secure your data and use a VPN. I was very happy and excited to partner with ClearVPN because they are a Ukrainian company and Ukrainians definitely know cybersecurity, especially with that crazy neighbor next door who's always trying to break in. So if you want to sign up and get yourself a free trial to ClearVPN, you can use my link below. And through this special partnership, I've actually decided I'm going to give all my profits to helping people in Ukraine. So you're going to be doing yourself a favor and you're going to be doing 
the people in Ukraine a favor. So check it out, ClearVPN. You can sign up by using my link below. Stay safe, guys. Oh yeah. And as a bonus tip, always close or lock your laptop and go to the bathroom. You never know who's watching. All right, so we are at Hooters, the world's largest Hooters, actually. Cup and cup. We got ourselves a Chang. Millie. I like it. Millie Vanilla. Huh? Oh, yeah. This is a, it's a special day. Chris's birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, buddy. Thanks, Johnny. Chris. Thanks for coming out. Glad you're here with us. Cheers. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Cup on cup. Dude, can you believe this is 200 baht? It's expensive. Yeah, it's eight dollars for like four things of celery. What the hell? So this is supposedly the world's biggest Hooters. Maybe by volume, but it doesn't have more seating than here. I guess maybe by like volume it has the most, but it definitely doesn't have the most seating. I've been I've been to ones in like San Diego that feels like you can see more people. But it definitely looks like every other food in the world. Great wing. I think they've improved the recipe. And really nice view right across from the beach as well. A little ocean view. Boys having a drink. What are you doing? You dancing? Is that your dance? <laughs> so officially, even though Songkran is only supposed to be for two or three days, people often like to start early, like a day or two early, and then they'll play for days after. And actually in Pattaya, it goes for a week after the official date. So if you miss it, Go to Pattaya, uh, you'll have a bonus Songkran day, a week. Welcome to Bio Songkran. It's a holiday to uh, be with friends and family, to extend yourself, to take a, a week off. This is what real Thai people do. They come to the beach, they come to Jam Tien. Only foreigners <laughs> think it's uh, just a water fight. The water fight, but this is what most time people actually do on Songkran be with friends, family, hang out. So, uh, guys, we are in Jump to Thailand, and we just have one thing to say Slava Krayana! So this was actually a meetup I had for Ukrainians in Pattaya and Jomtian. I made a free English speaking club because there's a lot of uh, people here that now have the default to speaking English, uh, especially while they're traveling and a lot of people just want to improve their English. So, you know, it's something that you can do in your hometown, wherever you guys live, if there's a lot of Ukrainians, just offer a free speaking club with a native speaker. You know, if you're uh, from the US, they prefer that. If you're British and you don't have a crazy Northern accent, that's good as well. Uh, but it was really interesting talking to them because I asked how they're getting along. What do they think of all the Russians in Pattaya? And all of them said, they just stay away from them. They, they ignore them. And it's a really separate group. And it's really different because even though the media and actually the government lumps Ukrainians and Russian tourists, I guess, right? Because everyone comes on twice visa, uh, in the same category, they're very different. And people don't realize that Russians are escaping, you know, maybe sanctions, or maybe they're escaping the draft, uh, or they're coming for vacation. Yeah, I, I've actually spoken to a lot of Ukrainians uh, and Russians in uh, Pattaya and Jomtian, where I'm living. And I'm asking them like, like all sorts of questions. And actually, one thing that I started doing that, but accidentally is I started wearing these like quick dry white t-shirt, uh, polo shirts from Decathlon all the time. 
really just because it's so hot. It's literally 34 degrees, which is like a, almost 100 or something. And it's hot. So it, those uh, cotton Ukraine shirts I bought in, uh, in Kiev and Lviv, I, they're just sweaty and like gross after a while because they just stick to my body. So I, I haven't been able to wear them. But what's good is I'm undercover. People think I'm just tourist or maybe they think I'm Thai. So I'll, I'll sit and have a whole conversation with Russian tourists on this like shared Songtao bus or just on the street. And I'll ask, I'll always ask them the same couple questions. I'll ask them uh, how long they're in Thailand for, um, how, what they're doing for visas, how they're, what they, you know, how the situation is back home for them. And if they support Putin, you know, and I'll make it very simple. I'll say like, uh, you like Putin? Like, is it, uh, well, what do you think of Putin? Like good or, or bad? And surprisingly, it's 50-50. Like a lot of the older Russians or the Russians from like these uh, more rural areas. So not from St. Petersburg or Moscow, but from like these small towns. They're like, oh, Putin's good. And there was even a guy on the street that was wearing a USSR shirt. So in Cyrillic, it looks more like CCCR, but it's USSR. And I thought he was wearing it as a joke. Russian you wearing a USSR t-shirt. Like being ironic or something. It'd be like us wearing like, I guess I don't know why someone would wear, ironically wear something like that bad, but I asked him, I went up to him and I said, oh, you know, USSR. You know, he's like, oh yeah, duh, USSR. And I said, oh, and you know, you like uh, Putin, like good or bad? And he's like, oh good, Putin good, good. And I said to him, no, Putin bad, Putin who low? You know, and he was like, whoa, whoa. And he was like really worried. And he was like, kind of big guy too. Probably a little bit older though, like maybe probably 50. And then he looked at me, I'm a big guy. And I was with two friends as well. He was by himself and he was like, no, 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 put it not so bad, put it not so bad. And he like walks away. But the Ukrainians never, uh, they, they never want to confront these guys. Uh, they just want to stay away from them. They want to just be left alone. And it's really sad because the Ukrainian tourists, I guess they're living here, are legitimate refugees. Even though they have enough money to be able to fly somewhere like Thailand and not, you know, just stay in like um, somewhere cold, like in Poland next door. Uh, a lot of these guys are IT workers. I would say 100% of the Ukrainians that I've met here have been working remotely. So that, that way they still have an income. And that's the only reason why they've been able to afford the, even the flight here. The cost of living is pretty low in Jomtin. Uh, as you know, I spend about 300 bucks a month on my rent. But the Russians are kind of a mixed sort. Like I've literally met Russians that said they're just here for two week vacation. And I was like, really? And they said, yeah, there's package tours that fly directly uh, into, into Thailand and it includes hotels and stuff like that. And it's like a thousand dollars like round trip, including a hotel. So it's really not that expensive. Um, I've also met Russians who just are on these visa runs. Will they'll come, get a 45 day stamp, and then they'll take a mini bus, a Thai Marshuka basically, to Cambodia, get the stamp, come straight back, and get another 30 or 45 days. Luckily, Thailand has actually changed this rule recently because it was being taken advantage of by so many people that now they've reduced it to 30 days and so now they get 30 and 30 days but unfortunately the thai government decided to do this for everybody including ukrainians including americans including like valid tourists and not just russians who are you know on extended holiday wearing ussr shirts walking around so it's a hard situation guys like on one hand it is 100% better that they are here in Thailand spending money and not paying taxes and s spending money in the Russian economy and also not you know, being sent to the front line as more cannon fodder and as someone who might get brainwashed into actually killing uh, Ukrainian soldiers or Ukrainian civilians uh, while attacking. So on, the, on one hand, I am glad that they're not in Russia, but on the other hand, when I see they're just having fun and enjoying a good life, while the Ukrainian tourists have to deal with their 
crap. They have to like hide from them and feel uncomfortable being around them and really just avoid them while the Russians are walking around like pompous and having fun like they're tourists or literally wearing a freaking USSR shirt. I wish I would have caught the front of it so you can see, but I have the clip from the back. But one of the Ukrainian uh, guys at the uh, language change, he said he saw the same guy. And I said, how, like, how does that make you feel? Somebody wearing a shirt, like, like literally imagine you're Jewish and your family, you know, got killed by the Nazis, you know, and imagine that's happening now in 2023 and someone decides to wear a swastika shirt. You know, I know Russia likes to call Ukrainian Nazis, but that's all BS. Like literally Russian propaganda 101 dictates whatever you're gonna do yourself, just blame that first on the other person. That way they can't blame it on you. It's, it's, it's such a simple thing. It's so stupid. It's like saying, no, you're the Nazi. I'm not the Nazi, but they're, they're the ones invading another country. They're the ones killing civilians, bombing houses, very similar to what the Nazis are doing. So I hope you guys are all, you know, intelligent enough to, to understand that. I'm sure you guys are the ones that are watching, but it's a shame that the propaganda works because how many Russians are still, oh, Putin good, Putin good. So anyways, wanted to uh, let you know that even though I'm not currently in Ukraine, I am on vacation. Um, hanging out with my friend Chris, who I really miss. I haven't seen him in a long time. You know, I'm back in the country that I lived in for seven years before COVID. You know, I'm eating all the food I missed. You know, I'm getting all the Thai massages and drinking all the, you know, delicious Thai iced coffees. I missed it. And I feel like I shouldn't have to feel bad about what's happening while uh, Russians just kind of go scot free, free, like, oh, my life is so good, or, oh, I'm the victim for having these, uh, you know, new visa instructions. It's, uh, it's, a very, it's very unfair. Like, the Ukrainians are definitely suffering by far the most. I just want people to remember that. So even though they are here in some quantity, they're, they're not the same. So if you have any control over visas and things like that for, for you know, for Russians and Ukrainians, Please don't let them together because they are not the same. Anyways, Slavia Ukraine guys, glory to the heroes. And I will see you guys back in just a few weeks. I already have my, my plane ticket booked actually, so I'll be back in May. Till then, Slavia Ukraine guys. Slavia Ukraine!